Hey guys, welcome back to the Mrs. YouTube channel. As always, my name is Abu Bakar Zakari. So, this is the fifth video in my CocoDB database setup and usage guide. And in this video, what I'm going to be focusing on is showing you guys how you can set up the CocoDB in your Next.js project with Prisma ORM. So, I already wrote an article about uh, this process. So, it's that article I'm just going to be following in this video. So don't worry, I'll leave a link down to the article in the description. So uh, yeah, here's the article right here. Setting up CocoDB in Next.js project with Prisma ORM. So to begin with, I'm assuming that you already have your Next.js project all set up. So uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using this um, simple Next.js project right here. This is uh, Next.js version 13. As you can see right here and it also has a uh, tailwind css setup already so uh, when i'm done with this video i'm going to host this uh, project on my github and also leave a link down in the description so in case maybe you want to just clone it and start uh, using it for your project so now to begin with uh, as you can see there is currently nothing in this project just a home page which uh, with a h1 tag that says demo project for using CocoDB with Next.js. So as you know, Coco, uh, Next.js has uh, full stack capabilities. So what we just need to do is set up CocoDB as our database so that we can start using it immediately in our Next.js project. So uh, if you haven't watched my previous um, videos, like I said here, as you can see, I have uh, two articles and videos you can just click on the link right here to take you this one will show you how you can um, yeah this is uh, the list of the playlist so you know this one this one shows you all the previous videos in this series and then uh, in this article this one right here I explained how you can create a free Cocos DB database on Cocos lab so this article contains how you can create a free account on the Cocoa Labs platform, how you can create your cluster, how you can generate the password, etc. So if you follow this uh, article, you should be able to have an account already on the Cocoa Labs platform. If you don't, I suggest you just click on this link and follow this article. In case you are having any issues, with, this is a link to the beginning of the playlist. You can just uh, click on this link and it will take you to the video. Or you can click on this one right here and it will show you all the previous videos in this playlist so you can check it out uh, as you can see this one shows you this does the introduction but this one shows you how you can create an, an account while this third one shows you how you can create the Cocos DB database on the Cocos Labs uh, platform so I do suggest that you watch those ones if you haven't already so that we'll all be on the same page so now uh, the next thing that we need to do this first thing I'm going to do is install the required packages. So um, the package that we're going to need to help us use CocoDB connection string, which if, like I said, you follow the previous article and video, you should have it saved somewhere in maybe your notepad or something. As you can see, I have mine right here. This is my connection string right here. So first thing that you need to do is install uh, the required packages and one of the packages that we're going to need is Prisma which is a server-side library that facilitates reading and writing data to the database in an intuitive efficient and safe way so for you to install it in uh, your next year's projects as you know if you are using npm just copy this right here npm install Prisma C save dev so i'm using npm so that's what i'm going to copy but let's say you are using the other ones maybe you're using yarn and you use this one if you're using pmp then you copy this one right here so let me just copy this for npm paste it in it's going to take um, a few seconds but it should be installed successfully let's see okay done so we finished installing prisma like I said, if you are using the other ones, if you are using the other package managers, maybe YARN or PMP, then you can follow this one right here. Now, please take note of this. If you are using NPM, then all the commands that we are going to be running from here onward will be you, you use NPX Prisma. 
for yarn, you do yarn prisma. For P N P M, you use P N P D L X prisma. So, uh, so now what we need to do is bootstrap a first project. Now to do that, all you just need to do is copy this command right here. So as you can see, like I said, because I'm using npm, I'm going to be using npx going onward. But as you can see, this one is npx prisma init. If we are using yarn, it will be yarn prisma init. If you are using pnpm, it will be pnp dlx prisma init. So I just hope that you understood uh, what I just said. Okay, now just copy it, come back here paste it and then run it take notes um what this is going to do is uh as you can see it creates a new prisma directory in your project with a simple schema.prisma file what this just contains is uh this schema.prisma file is where you are going to define your models that you are going to be migrating to your database now as you can see by default it uses postgres sql but if maybe you are working in a development environment you can change it to sql um, sorry to dbsqlite, but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. I'm just going to stick with Postgres SQL. So it also creates a .env file for you. This is where you can define your environment variables. And as you can see, we have a dummy environment variable right here. What we just need to do is replace this value, that this connection string, with our own. So let me go back to the article quickly. Okay. Um, now let's create a simple model. Let's create a simple model. So let's say you just copy this right here. This is a simple model address and paid. Go to your schema.prisma file, paste it in here in here. Address this uh is single model with two fields. We have address and then we have paid. Address is a string, and by default, it is the ID and it is unique, meaning that you can only have one instance of it in this user model and then we have paid which can either be true or false but by default it is false so once this is done let me save it real quick let me see what's next uh okay yeah as you can see in the dot env file we have to update the database you are a connection string so uh let me quickly go and get my connection string this is it right here just copy this copy it and then um yes so let me see am i missing anything okay yeah. copy it and then paste it in right here easy to replace it right here paste as you can see save it and uh let me see what's the next one some below okay now uh as you can see formally you can even see from the text i think it explained it where is it okay, for me it's right here prisma supports the navy connection string for postgres sql mysql sql lite sql server mongodb and CocoDB. so as you know in this uh next days what we are going to be using the database that we are trying to connect to it is CocoDB. this although it works a bit like a postgres sql but they are not exactly the same thing so what we need to do now is replace this uh, Postgres SQL, as you can see, with CoCoachDB right here. So just copy this. Sorry. Copy this. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> copy this and then um, come back to your code. Postgres SQL right here, replace it with CoCoachDB. So this, uh, this is your connection string for your database. And as you can see, this is going to be picked from this value right here in your dot env file so let's see what's next okay now the next thing that we need to do is migrate our database now this is the database right here this is it right here so what i need to do right now is um copy this command mpx prisma migrate dev come here click on it this is your, to migrate your model. That's the model that we created in the schema.prisma file into the CocoHDB database. So let's see. It's going to take a few seconds. Okay. 
Let me see. I'm missing anything. I don't think I'm missing anything. Okay. Also, uh, when you are migrating, it's going to ask you for a name. Now, you have to uh, name it differently. Like, um, let's say, for example, initial. Let's say the first one. You can give it a name like initial. So you can see you can name it whatever you like but just make sure that it is unique and different for each migrations that you make i would even suggest that better you should name it 001 then you keep incrementing like that the same way that django does it although that of django is automatic so uh let's say i name this 001 click on enter yes, the migrations have been applied this one in generates uh, okay why that is working let me look at this okay now um if everything works successfully you can confirm it by running a command to start Quizma studio uh i will edit this article and add that uh command for those of you who don't know it already but uh, for this video let me just show you what it is all you need to do remember like i said if you are working with yarn it's going to be different you're working with pn pm is going to be different if you're working with npm it's going to be different so this i'm working with npm it's just going to be npx quizma studio that's it this is just like this is a dashboard environment but it's only available on development you can't use this in production in production you're going to have to be done to create your dashboard yourself so as i've done this i just click on MPX Studio executes the command, and as you can see, it creates a. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. This is our dashboard, and as you can see, we have that simple user model which we migrated to our database. If I click on it, I can add a new record. Let's say address should be uh, 200 units. Oh, what am I spelling? Units housing. It's paid. Yes, I paid. I, I can't say I'm winning anybody anything. So, to any national states, paid true. Save it and let it refresh. As you can see, the data has been saved to your database and uh, it's going to be available if you use this database in production or use it in development. It's now being stored on Coco. So, like I said, following this above step, uh, I think, yeah, we've been able to connect our CoCoachDB database to our Next.js project. So, let's say, for example, you want to add more models, you can just do that right here. You can add another model, let's say, uh, model, um, let's say, games, for example. Uh, let's say, name, and the name should be a string. Model games name should be a string at um, default should be no there's no need to put the default so let me say ID this is going to be integer at ID at unique yes so uh let me close this Prisma Studio npx now i want to migrate this new model it does do npx prisma remember migrate dev okay now like i said it's going to ask you for the name of the migrations every time that you migrate to the database so uh, i don't know why this is taking so long let's see okay let me see let me show you guys other things i think that's all and uh yeah that's all for this uh particular tutorial yes yes that's everything so let me see all right like as you can see it's asking for a name again i can name it 002 this time remember the initial one was 001 Let's see 
applying migrations okay we migrated successfully now let me do mpx prisma studio again okay switching the rules and the tables click on it can you see i have two models now user model and my games model and i can add view to it let's say okay this one is uh unique so and let me say i named this one name Abu Bakr Zachary. save the change let it refresh and then as you can see we have one object in the games model and one object in the users model so uh, that is all for this tutorial i do hope that you've been able to follow it successfully and connected your CocoDB database to your nextjs project if in case you have any issues at all and you can just feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section right here and leave a comment down in the comment section right here or you can go to YouTube and leave a comment in the video. I will get back to you as soon as I can and help you to resolve your issues. So as always, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And in case this video have helped you out in any way, then please do ensure to smash that uh, like button and subscribe to the channel so that you'll be updated to, uh, on the new content that I will be releasing. So I will see you guys in the next video.